Hi everybody, and welcome to a Gem of a Secret podcast. My name is Donatella My Secrets. And my name is Donatella My Secrets. I'm just joking. It's Coco <laughs> Gem Holiday. How are you doing tonight, Coco? Um, I'm feeling really hot. It's super hot right now. <laughs> it is. It is hot. I, I mean, I feel like that's kind of the narrative for our episode when we open nowadays, though. <laughs> summers, summers here are just so humid and weird and hot, and we've talked about the weather here, and it's just going to be a topic of conversation. It is. Time. Well, because, yeah, because we live in practically a rainforest in our house at this point. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I never realized that, like, I know it rains a lot here in Portland, but my goodness, like, the... Like, grass will grow overnight to where it's, like, six feet tall. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it is insane. And I kind of, I actually prefer the rainy days here over over these days. Yeah, I like the sun is nice. I did go on a nice little walk today. I went rando nodding. Um, Speaking of Gen Zs, like we were last episode, it's something I learned from them. Rando nodding. Rando nodding. It's where, it's an app where um, you basically will, uh, it gets your location, and mm-hmm. it sends you a uh, set of coordinates that are completely random, mm-hmm. and um, after you, like, put your intention out into the universe. So you take some time, and it does that, and then it sends you just a random location, and you go out, and you walk to it, and it's supposed to, like, help with, like, synchronicity in the universe, and you run upon, um, like, random things. Heavens, I swear. <laughs> it was really cool. I, I, um, I, my intention was prosperity and abundance today, and I went out mm-hmm. and I found a little rock that said, this is a sign. So, I, I wanted money and I got a painted rock. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I learned a term today, but now I can't remember what it is. But apparently, it's a term that zillennials use to uh, say that. Did you every- say zillennials. Zillennials. That's what I call them now. Isn't it zoomers? <laughs> is it zoomers? <laughs> <laughs> zillennials. Uh, so zoomers, where they talk about everybody looks on point. I forgot what it. Like the outfit looks good. I forgot what the word is though. But it's not on point, obviously. Yeah, it's not on that's point. That's our our yeah. old, old terminology. Well, and then ours was on fleek for five on seconds, fl- and I'm yes. super glad that that died. That stopped. <laughs> yeah, but there's a word for it now, and I can't remember what it is. I'll think I of it halfway know. through the episode. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Just to age myself here, I don't really know the words <laughs> of these childrens. Um, yeah. So there we go. That was a two minute introduction. That was. That was. <laughs> Oh, goodness. So we are back, listeners, and I'm so excited to, um, we we kind of, we noticed that we've been talking a lot about, like, things that are happening in the world a lot, but we wanted to go back to our roots, of course, and talk about something really specifically drag. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, we wanted to talk about, okay, so everyone, I think I remember the first time it really happened to me, and we, it, it probably happened many times before that, but I remember when it happened to us together, when, uh, we were in Junction, and it was right before a show. We had some queens from out of town that were coming in, oh, and we were yes. doing a show. And they came up and basically, like, told us all of the things that were wrong about our makeup. Yes. I remember being told um, how basic I looked, how mm-hmm. my outfits weren't right, how um, I was told how I walked in heels didn't look right. And I got I was just read for filth, mm-hmm. left and right. It was awful. Super yeah. awful. Yeah, I didn't cover my brows at the time, and I was told I'd be prettier if I covered oh, my brows. Oh, that's right. Which, I mean, I that, that, is, that was a constructive critique that I ended up, you know. But I do have really nice brows regardless. The thing is, I tweeze my brows to look mm-hmm. very thin. So, you know, like, I I do st- cover my brows nowadays, but back then I was not. I was using my natural brow for a long time. Yeah, I used my natural brow for a very long time. Um mm-hmm. For, like, probably much... I think I've been doing drag for, like, eight years now. Uh, mm-hmm. For four years, I probably wasn't covering my brows. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I didn't know how to, and watching YouTube videos just made it feel really intense. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so, like, so we wanted to talk about giving criticism um, a little bit. Well, actually, not giving ri- criticism, per se. Getting it. Yeah, getting it. We and how just... to react properly. Yeah, because the fact is, like, it can be really damaging. Yeah. My ex would always say this really great line of, don't tell me something's wrong with my makeup when I'm at the gig. Yes. And I, I've always stood by that, because uh, I remember they always used to say, well, because I can't fix it now. I'm here. Probably didn't bring my makeup with me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and even if I this did... This is what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And I will... And I know everybody's going to be mad at me when I say this. Yeah. I think I look so much better when I paint at home versus when I'm painting in a basement with a thousand other people in a hot, sweaty basement with, like, what's good lighting or good room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I, you know, and honestly, there is, I think there is something to be, to be said about saying it because I think it also does come off as polite for people too, because it's like, Hey, I'm giving you this to fix. And in case you have time to fix it, there's that, you know, like it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be a thing that is of malice, you know? Yeah. And I really think the only critique that you should give somebody at the gig is, um, if their eyelashes wonky. That's one, that's one that I appreciate. Please tell me. Yeah. Because that you can, <laughs> everyone has eyelash. Some girl or in the basement. Bomb glue or yeah. Something. yeah. Has eyelash glue in the basement and we can fix that. Yeah. But if it's like, Oh girl, I just don't think your highlights popping enough. It's like, Great. Yeah, if it's something about <laughs> their makeup that it's like it's not going to be fixable in a mm-hmm. night, mm-hmm. like maybe that's something that you could um very gener- like uh softly, what was that what am I trying to say? <laughs> um very softly say, mm-hmm. uh gently say, uh why don't we like do makeup together sometime or something like that. You know, like yeah. that's one way that you could like suggest trying new techniques, you know, because that's, how, that's always how I learned the best was when I got mm-hmm. together with people and we did our makeup together, mm-hmm. you know, and I, we both learned from each other. We did learn from each other. And that's probably why it took us so long. Yeah. And in, in a way, and I will, I don't regret how I came up in drag, but because we didn't have a lot of drag around us, it took us a lot longer. We started, mm-hmm. uh, before Britta filter doing drag and now she's on drag race Yeah, because that New York scene, obviously yeah. like, gets you it, it makes you better faster definitely um when yeah. we had youtube yeah to be honest no i remember i remember even when i ran into britta when we were in colorado springs for that show that one time and me <laughs> definitely not being up to par but she was still so nice to me and she had started just recently in drag <laughs> yeah it was ridiculous and she had only been at it for like a year or two at that point yeah, or something gosh it was killing me but the reason we wanted to talk about it is we want to talk about the the getting criticism side like we talked about when we were in junction and I can say, well, and it's actually something me and Donna do very actively. We don't really ever give criticism to other drag mm-hmm. artists, um, per se, unless it's like, uh, like a drag daughter or something like that, or a drag son. But like, I just don't feel like, it's just not my place. Like, yeah. I do not know what you're, and even if I do know what you're trying to go for, it's not my place to F up your evening because I decided to be like... Oh my gosh, her eyebrows look so messed up. I give like, suggestions when asked. Yeah, me too. And that's about it. Well, like, and, and even though, like, some, I will lie with that, though. Like, if somebody is in the basement, like, how do I look tonight? I'm like, you look great. Like, because if you're filling your fantasy, because you can see it when someone asks, how do I look tonight? Like, I tried something new. And you're like, you look great. I, I think that's really important to get a read of the room and see, like, how someone is feeling. And even if someone is feeling very, very anxious about how they're looking that night, it's probably best not to play into the fact that and be like, oh, girl, like, yeah, you need to fix that, you know? Like, that's not going to make them feel any better, you know? So I guess just being a little bit more constructive and and offering what you can, but also not um, not making people, like feel down on themselves yeah because it 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 can really f up your evening when you get down on yourself in the dressing room it's really hard to pull it out for the stage Mm -hmm. so like if somebody's like reading you for filth in a basement and then you have to go perform a fast number or even an emotional song in front of a bunch of people like it really f's with your head game which of course then f's with your tips and sometimes as much as we try not to sometimes we equate tips to worth Uh um and so you're like wow like my makeup is really terrible and i made nothing so wow that person was right i suck like (laughs) yeah yeah. so i have a question for you Hmm. since you've been here have you had a critique that has been particularly like uh soul crushing for you (laughs) or maybe not even necessarily soul crushing but it's like something that affected your night or affected you in the moment when you were given it yeah so a lot of people in this community don't really have really come after my eyebrows a lot yeah and it's really um effed with my face a lot like mm-hmm. i there's many looks that i don't appreciate like i'm sorry this is actually a true statement about me and it's not even me being hard-headed because i have been doing drag a while if i don't like my face i don't care that you like my face so when somebody's like this this is great. I love this. Your eyebrows that are on very point. very true about you. Yeah. I, I'm like, but I don't like it. Like, yeah. if I don't like it, I don't really care what you think. Yeah. And it just, it's not about, like, um, a technique or, like, say, like, there's, like, a smudge or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. that. Like and somebody likes my face, that's fine. But if I do not like the face shape and the face dynamic or yeah. the presentation of this face, um, especially if I change myself to fit a mold, 
I do not care. Yeah. <laughs> if you like the face. Yeah. It's true. And yeah, and well, because you've had those experiences in town too. I have. Like, yeah. well, yeah, let me just ask the same question. Like, do you have any, like, soul crushing, <laughs> um, you suck. <laughs> a couple of times, and it's mostly it's mostly just come in the form of like unsolicited advice. Like I was I wasn't asking for it. I feel like <laughs> like people just told me they told me oh I love these things about you, but <laughs> and mm-hmm. I'm like oh okay. There's always a but, isn't mm-hmm. there? There's always a big old but. Yeah, yeah. W- one that just destroys your soul just a little bit. <laughs> and because there there are things that we are all self conscious about when we're mm-hmm. in drag because we're human people. And things will make us feel a certain way. And the thing is, like, it's it's funny. It's it's not just any one age demographic that's done it to me. I've it's been done to me by someone who is in an older demographic, and then also to queens. A lot of younger queens do it too. So it's not like mm-hmm. it's not a generational thing to just go up and mm-hmm. and read people. Agreed. <laughs> that's something that's been part of like the drag community forever and always. So it's nothing that's going to change. But. You can change how you're going to react to it. So let's talk about our reactions. Yes. And I do want to throw in just a one point in there, though. Just because I don't give a suggestion doesn't mean I don't see your makeup or your outfit Mm -hmm. or your package. I, of course, have my own opinion about what you could do better or if it's everything. But it's really not my place. It's about whether... It's about politeness. It's kindness. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's tactfulness also. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. So, yes, reactions. Um... You know what? Like, nowadays, I am very quiet. And normally, Uh, back in the day, I would have been very argumentative. Uh But nowadays, I just don't really say anything when it's happening. Because I know that if I do, I'm going to pop off and probably just argue and be like, and try to try to argue my case when I don't have to. Like, there's, you don't need to explain your drag. Mm -hmm. You don't need to explain yourself, (laughs) you Mm -hmm. know? Like, there's no need for that. Yeah, well, and it's like the quote that my ex said, like, Especially if, so say it was, somebody is critiquing me on a mistake that I even know I made. Uh-huh. Um, I got fallout or something, and there's just like a black dot or something on my face. And somebody's like, oh, girl, you got like, ugh, like a little black yeah. thing on your face there. Um, I get really dejected, honestly. Yeah. yeah. After eight years of drag, I still get dejected. I still I get too. my feelings hurt. It'll ruin my night. Oh, it 100% will ruin my <laughs> night. <laughs> and, and it does. And like... And I just really don't appreciate, um, like, I don't like anybody to yuck my yum. Mm-hmm. Like, especially if I push through to show up on time. Because, like, there is a point where you do on your makeup, just for anybody out there who listens to us that doesn't do drag. Uh, there always is a time frame. And mm-hmm. so, like, you're like, crap, I can't repaint my whole face because I got some fallout. I have to just maybe put some glitter on and call it a day and just yeah. get to the gig and maybe try to have some hair that wafts over that side of my face. Yeah. Like. That's the end of it. And so my reaction, especially when people attack me on something I'm self-conscious about, um, I get just really sad. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing, so then I want to talk about, like, the reaction for when I think I look great, actually, and somebody critiques me. I, I um, I get sad, but really at them. I'll be like, I thought I looked really great tonight. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I guess. Like, I guess... That's, Sorry, I mean, this wasn't doing it for you, <laughs> yeah, but I don't do this for you. Yeah, I, don't I do, do it for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I liked this face. Like, I took 10,000 selfies. Like, yeah. screw you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot to ask, um, even though I hate her makeup tonight, because remember, we're all in drag. Yes. Um, My Donna. wig is stacked to the ceiling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on, Marge Simpson. <laughs> so. My wig is never stacked to the ceiling. <laughs> no one's going to believe this. <laughs> So, I forgot to ask, Donna, how are you doing this evening? You know what? I'll let you know after this brief commercial break. Get ready for the digital drag experience you've been waiting for. Introvert, an online interactive drag experience. The show is Saturday, August 1st at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time with queens from franchise like Camp Wanakiki, RuPaul's Drag Race, and the Boulay Brothers Dragula. The show's hosted by Autumn Rains Hart and Camp Wanakiki Season 2 star Coco Gem Holiday. Tickets are available for $5 at thecdsdrag.com slash introvert. It's a podcast with Coco and Donna tell a podcast. Tune into what they tell you podcast with Coco and Donna tell a podcast. 
You know, Coco, I am feeling a lot better lately because one of my biggest anxiety inducers, um, I uh, deactivated today, um, and that was Facebook. You know, I bet it's the same feeling, like, right before, you, like, you bought them. Like, it's, like, one of those things where you're like, oh, my God, I'm so anxious. <laughs> I, don't <know> if it's, <laughs> I don't know if it's quite that. Um, no, I, I feel like a weight is off me. And there are reasons. I have my reasons why this weight has been lifted off of me. Well, and you know, actually, before you explain that, we did have an episode, um, and I don't remember which episode number it is because I don't research, but we did talk about, remember there was that conversation about that woman who sued Facebook, I believe, because she was a content moderator? Yes. And uh, because the stuff she was finding on Facebook was just so damaging and damaging yeah. that it caused her to have like PTSD. Yeah, mental anguish. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, but let's talk about your reason. <laughs> I mean, mine's mine's not quite for that reason, but there is a lot of crap on there, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Yeah. Um. So for me, it was more so I look at the people that I've kept on there over the years, and they're all people I don't really particularly have stake in. You know, like it's people from high school that yeah. I still have on my Facebook, um, distant family members. Um, right. Well, and it's actually... I. Lo- this is a great time. We didn't talk about this beforehand, but I kind of want to ask you about this. Like, so my Facebook, like, like you always had this thing too, to where you, you weren't really out and proud on Facebook. No, and I still haven't felt related. it. I still haven't felt out and proud on Facebook. That's and, a lot of it. Yeah. And well, why? Like, cause now obviously you don't live at home anymore mm-hmm. or in your home city. So why why not like why didn't you i i didn't say as many divisive things or or express myself as authentically as i I never felt authentic on that platform Mm. that was the big thing is i never felt like i could be authentic because there would always be naysayers that would like pop up and usually right around the time it happened i would delete the comment but it would be something that affected me the entire day you know so like i'd post something that i was I was opinionated about, or I would post something that was just me expressing, you know, me, and um, there would be people that would, like, comment negatively about it, Mm. and um, I was always in this, like, I always had to be very aware of what I would post on there, because I know how those little battles with people affected me, and I know how easily it was for me to, like, fall into traps of people who were simply being provocative, you know, who were who were just trying to get a response out of me and stuff like that. Yeah. So that was something that I definitely, like, I don't know, I just had a lot of trouble with. I didn't feel like I could fully express myself because I was constantly in this state of being like, okay, what's the, what's the reaction going to be, you know? And I feel like that's it's a good way to be uh, in certain respects on social media because you want to make sure you don't post anything stupid. But at the same time, at what point are you risking your authenticity to make sure that people in your family aren't disappointed by an opinion that they didn't know you had about something, you know, or, and, and it's like, it's also, why should I give a shit? But at the same time, it's, it goes deeper than that because it's, you know, families are, are rough. It's it's something that we're all working through specific issues of how we feel like we haven't lived up to specific standards that were set for us and all that, you know? Yeah, I, I, can, I guess I can see that. Um, my mom's, one of her eldest best friends, actually. Um, it's funny, I was about to say their name. That'd be so rude. Um, <laughs> they do not agree with the stuff that I post online. Yeah. Um, and I go to their Facebook often, and they post some of the most horrific, yeah. horribly oppressive, mar- la- marginally racist things that I've ever seen in my life. And it's one of my mom's oldest best friends. And like mm-hmm. I just, and it's so triggering for me whenever I see them post something or say something on Facebook. And it's just, it's gross, and it makes me so angry. And the sad thing is, what I'm recognizing, because I was having this thought while you were talking... Mm-hmm. The reason I think that the other platforms don't seem as toxic is because Facebook is a social media platform to connect you to people you know. Yes. Right? Like, bare bones connect you to people you know. Yes. Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok are about broadcasting content. In my yeah. Opinion. And also making connections with people from across the world that you may not know. Yeah. Like, so... Because there, I don't like, so it's like with Instagram, you can click on a hashtag with something you relate to, right? So you'll see people who have kind of some of those similar views. Yeah. Um, and 
gosh, I'm like having this awakening. Um, it doesn't happen <laughs> as often. Like, like there's this artist, this queer. I love web comics. They're one of my favorite guilty pleasures that I don't actually think I've ever said to anyone out loud. I love mm-hmm. reading web comics. Um, they're so fun. Uh, there's a one that does like queer adult um, stuff that I'm reading right now, mm-hmm. and they posted this thing on their Instagram about how they're not racist because A, B, C, D, and E, and they live in France. And it was so Facebooky, yeah. Like, and it was because like I'm following this person because I like their content, and then they posted this thing that made me so upset because in Instagram that doesn't happen very often, yeah. To where because like you're following people. Instagram and Twitter and TikTok all become an echo chamber. Yeah. They are. Because you follow people in your For You page. Who are like-minded. Or who are incredibly like-minded. Have the same interests. Yeah. And it's, it's, for a lack of better term, it becomes a safe place. Yeah. For you to experience and share your content because you don't have people on there who have ridiculous views that hurt you. Because on Facebook, it was about who you know, not necessarily the people you want to file follow. Because I don't follow a lot of Facebook fan pages, like pages. No, I don't. I don't really either. And if I did, it was all when I when you know, like pages were more of a thing. Yeah. And I, I'm also, you know, like I don't get a whole lot of interaction from my Donatella page on Facebook. And it's a like page. It's a fan page. So that's, you know, another thing that I have to consider is I don't get a lot of interaction on that um, unless I promote posts and, and pay for them to be promoted, which is something that I could just do now on Instagram. I could do all my promo- promotions on Instagram and on Twitter now. Um, I, I noticed that it was a problem for me when I didn't feel good to log on anymore. I, I got physical symptoms of anxiety getting on my computer to see how people may have reacted to something I posted and it had always felt that way you know like like I said I always felt like I couldn't be 100% authentic on there because I felt like I had all these people watching me and and honestly judging I had all these people judging me and I know the answer right now is why should I give a shit the easiest answer for me is like I'm going to take the route that it gives me the most peace and that is to not have to worry about it at all so that's for a while just doing away with it and not being present on it um because it's it's not good for really like any of me to to uh feel that I have to maintain this false image of myself when I feel I can be authentic on other platforms yeah I can see that I find social media to be incredibly frustrating, just in general. But we're talking specifically about leaving social media or where yeah. to stay. Um, so I'm not going to get into the marketing um, aspect of social media. But so for me, like my Facebook is pretty active. Uh-huh. I've gotten through a lot of the ups and downs about how you post and what you should and should not say. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have. I've had some really great success in Portland about some of the things I've said, where I'll get a lot of shares. Um, like, on the 4th of July, I was one of those people who said all countries matter kind of posts or yeah. whatever. And that got quite a few shares and quite a bunch of likes and stuff like that. And that, of course, it does make you feel good when you're having that notoriety. But there's still a downward slope to where you post something equally as woke, but you get, like, five people to share it and two mm-hmm. people to like it. And that can hit you sideways, too. Um, and so... So so Donna's leaving, but I'm staying. And one of the reasons I'm staying is I just really feel like it's my duty as a drag artist and as an activist to like make sure that my message is heard. Uh, today, specifically, I, was, I saw some, whew, some BS on Facebook. And I just, um, for instance, like for those of you who are keeping up with the media, Melania Trump wore a dress that had like scribbles on it or whatever. It was a design. And conservatives were using it to say that the designs in the dress were made by child sex abuse victims. And it was a complete and utter lie. Um, I went to Snopes because I do research. Mm-hmm. And and it was just made by, it was a dress made by Alexander McQueen, done like, and some college students like came up with the, like, with the design on the dress. So it was a complete lie that was trying to push a narrative um, to, you know, make people feel bad for being mean to Melania Trump. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think that that's something that we find more nowadays on Facebook is that a lot of these comments, these captions or comment sections or these memes that are created um, are taken as news by people. And it's mm-hmm. it's honestly on both sides. I, I see some outrageous memes shared on both sides that are either e- extremely deceptive and misleading or just factually inaccurate. And you do have to call it out. And usually there is this little like bar that'll come about something if, if it's been fact checked by Facebook that says false this has been this post has been fact checked and mm-hmm. it's false it'll give like a little disclaimer on some of them I don't I didn't see it that often I don't see it I've never actually you've seen never it. seen one of those I've never seen it oh I've heard it exists I've yeah seen I've it. seen it on I've seen it on like an article or two that people are shared and they're usually pretty ridiculous articles um but yeah, no, uh, it's uh, it's get- gotten very frustrating that that is how people are citing things. And a lot of my frustrations with leaving the platform, too, are I would have arguments with people and certain sources that if you look at a bias chart are unbiased, are right in the middle or just left of center or, you know, like they're not they're not far, far left or far right sources. They have reliable history. I'm talking things like The New York Times, like The Washington Post, which um, unfortunately the rhetoric in the nation is people are calling that fake news even. Um, I would cite things to contradict some of these, you know, not well cited things. And um, I, that's the response I would get. And we have, I think Facebook culture is kind of mirroring how our actual culture is since this in- administration took over. And it's it's more about feelings and confirmation bias than it is about actual facts and it's sad. Mm-hmm. It's sad to me. Yeah, people try to find articles, like confirmation bias, people try to find articles that just agree with them. Yeah. When th- the sad thing is, if you went to Twitter, you could just follow people who agree with you, and then your exactly. experience would be better. Yeah, just do that, <laughs> you know? And like. I, but the thing is, and just to touch on it very minutely here, Twitter and Instagram have been such a challenge for me because I feel like I can't get the notoriety that I do from Facebook for my drag. And, like, drag queens are incredibly vain. Um, yeah. <laughs> they, like, we're, we're pretty much like Tinkerbell. Like, They're... you gotta appreciate us or we die. Yeah. Um, and I find really hard struggles with that. And with Instagram, I I know how to do Instagram notoriety, but it's just incredibly challenging. Just mm-hmm. constantly challenging. Because if you build up a follower base and you don't have to do as much work. Yeah. But um, I do agree with Donna's standpoint and aspects of why she wants to leave Facebook. Because I've had those feelings too. In Grand Junction, I thought about deactivating my Facebook constantly. Mm -hmm. A lot of those people disagreed with my viewpoints almost on the daily basis. And I had a lot of comment threads that said negative things about me to where I wanted to get off the platform quite frequently. But I always felt like I had a duty to do something right. Mm -hmm. I even had one recently where people from Grand Junction were just being awful towards me. And I got messages from people from there. And the fact is, like, that place is sad, honestly. It really is a sad little place and people... Um, consistently think that they are trying to do something yeah. to hurt other people, which it's just because it comes from the negative aspect of still living there, in my personal opinion. So yeah. throwing that out there. But um, where I stand is um, I would... And also, just as a side note, I've kind of taken a back... I've kind of put in social media on the back burner because of the BLM movement. Like, I haven't posted to TikTok, um, I haven't posted to Instagram, and I haven't posted to Twitter. Um, I use my Facebook for social activism because anything else right now feels wrong to me being a black person. And I really feel like I should be using my platform to make a difference. And if I'm not doing that, then I feel really uncomfortable. And of course, yes, we have like shows like Introvert coming up, but I also know where my priorities are and wanting this movement to continue so we can truly really create that systemic change, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So definitely. And that kind of brings us to our feed the positive segment where we talk about drag artists in our community who've kind of been making an impact or we just like their looks or we're just really nice. Um, so mine is, um, I want to talk about Donatella Nobody, uh, because Lad Tap House did close, which meant we lost Starlets and Harlots, which we've talked about a few times. That was the show that me, Donatella Nobody and Donatella My Secrets produced together. Um, so my shout out is for them because they have done such an amazing job at trying to be a really great friend to me and I am such a crappy friend in return. Seriously, I hate text messaging. Um, but you can find them at, at Donatella Nobody Please on Instagram. Uh, they're really talented. They're in the theater world. They have a bunch of uh, awards for set 
design and set building and things like that. So yeah, yeah, go give them a follow. Yeah, they really um, did give us some great opportunities getting started there at Lad Tap House, and that was a, a lot of fun to do that show. And our next on the Feed the Positive segment is The Kitten Kiara, The Kitten underscore K-I-A-R-A, and that's Carmen Kiara Cortez, um, or just Kiara. You can find her on Instagram um, at that handle, and she has some amazing looks. She's also someone that I've done brunch with. I really appreciate her creativity, um, her handiwork, and the outfits that she makes for herself. Uh, for herself and um, she really just has a very clear vision on her persona what she brings to the table as an entertainer and she's one of the entertainers that I've watched where my jaw is just on the floor um, watching her perform because she does really turn it the fuck out (laughs) she's really awesome and um, I encourage you to go follow her on Instagram and check her out um, wherever she performs after this uh, pandemic yeah she's also funny as hell she She is so funny such a good time Yeah, so I guess that brings us to the end of our episode. Yeah. You can catch us um, and our exclusive content on a gemofasecretpodcast.com. Thank you for tuning in this week, everybody. We will uh, catch you next week on Thursday. Yeah, and please make sure to go over to Apple Podcasts and rate us a five stars if you don't absolutely hate what we're doing. Yes. It helps us out a lot. Like, comment, and subscribe on whatever platform you listen on. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. This has been another episode of HM of a Secret Podcast. The hosts of HM of a Secret Podcast are Donatella My Secrets and Coco Jim Holiday. You may follow Donatella My Secrets at Donatella underscore My Secrets on Instagram. You may follow Coco Jim Holiday at Coco Jim Holiday on Instagram. Original music by Touche Douche and Party Favors. You can follow them respectively at The Touche Douche and at Party Favors Music on Instagram. For more exclusive content, visit www.ajemofasecretpodcast.com. That is a j e m of a secret podcast.com. Be sure to tune in every week on Thursday for a new episode wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have any comments or questions, email us at a gem of a secret pod at gmail.com. Please don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.